was announced along the third base line, they gave him an almost two-minute standing raucous ovation. Well, and he also hopped on a horse here as they were taking the flag out to center field before they put it up, and he rode with the on a horse with the flag. Of course, uh, he takes it out to his guys, and I mean, Madison hopping on like he's he's done it a uh, hundred times. Well, he's done it a lot well, more than know, that because on his farm in Carolina, I'm sure that's that's what he does every day. Yeah, you can tell he's a natural uh, out in the saddle. But 270 innings pitched for Madison last year. Now the key is see how it affects him this year. And that and that's been the conversation. But he's a young guy who's in his prime, certainly. And he is as big and as strong as any pitcher in the game. He's off to a slow start this year, and that's why uh-huh. that you know, thought gets raised a lot. I always say, who cares? You know why? Yeah. Guess what? The Giants <laughs> are world champions. He threw 270 innings last year. Without his 270 innings and certainly his work in the World Series, which is unprecedented mm-hmm. in the history of the game, he has like an 026 ERA in the World Series. They're not world no. champions. Well, there's no way that Bruce Bochy was going to take him out of that game. Game seven, he could have thrown and thrown and thrown as many pitches as he needed to. Yep. But he wasn't coming out. He was not coming out. Well, it's time for the Rockies starting lineup brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. The Rockies will try to bounce back after that heartbreaking loss yesterday, 6-5. to five to the Cubs on the two-run home run in the ninth inning by Dexter Fowler. Charlie will lead it off. Carlos Gonzalez will bat second. Troy Tulowitzki in his uh, hometown area will bat third. He's always performed well against the Giants. Justin Morneau next. Nolan Arenado, Corey Dickerson. Nick Huntley back in there. He had yesterday off. DJ LeMahieu's off to a terrific start. And then Eddie Butler. On the hill is uh, an interesting guy. Chris Heston has made only two other, or three, excuse me, two other big league starts. One late last year, and then his first start of the year, and he was very good against Arizona. But he's not Eddie Butler's age. He's 27. Well, he's also drafted three other times, went to junior college and went to college at East Carolina, decided to sign in the 12th round in 2009. So Hessen's filling in for for Matt Kane, who's... uh, (laughs) battling a lot of injuries himself had bone chips taken out of his elbow had ankle surgery now it's a flexor tendon so an older guy but he's uh only the second rookie to ever start an opening day for the san francisco giants the other guy was alan folks back in 1982 (laughs) that's since the giants moved out of the northern part of manhattan and arrived in san francisco in 58 So amid a perfect afternoon, albeit a little bit cool, we are ready for baseball. Chris Heston, the 27-year-old right-hander against Charlie Blackman, who is really starting to come alive with the bat. First pitch is in there for a strike. Charlie yesterday, three for four and a walk, and he had a double in the bottom of the ninth inning to give the Rockies some hope. Unfortunately, they couldn't cash it in. And that's a bullet back up the middle by Blackman. Stay hot, Charlie. Good start for the Rockies. He's starting to see Charlie get that swing back that he had for all of 2014. Sinking fastball that stayed flat right back up the middle over the top of the head. Nothing better as a leadoff hitter than you take that one right back up the middle and make that pitcher duck. So here's Cargo. Cargo one for five. He was facing Hector Rondon with two outs in the ninth inning yesterday trying to drive home Blackman. He said it was all he could do just to see the baseball (laughs) with the shadows. He ended up popping out. And this is on the ground the second. Could be two. Here's the Giants defensively. They're off to a three and four start. They've lost three consecutive games, all at the hands of the Padres. Nori Aoki comes over from the world champs, the Royals. Angel Pagan is in center. Gregor Blanco's in right. Matt Duffy at third. Brandon Crawford, Joe Panic up the middle. Brandon Bell playing with a sore groin. And Buster Posey is behind the plate. Two outs, and here's Tulowitzki. Not much reaction for any of the Rockies when they were introduced along the first base line, save to <laughs> Lewinsky. And uh, the Bluebirds came out, and that's the ultimate tip of the cap. 
Well, he's had 17 career home runs against the Giants. That leads all active players. The thing I like about it, too, which probably is surprising, is that nine of the 17, obviously more than half, have come here at AT&T Park, where it's hard to hit it out. It is. I mean, today it might be easier because it's during the day. The wind is blowing out. At least the flags at center field say it's going out. But it does swirl, not as bad as candlestick. But there is some swirling winds here. Slider misses. It's one and two. Too low pinch hit in the ninth inning yesterday struck out against Rondo and it was a scheduled day off. Giants playing Joe Panic virtually up the middle. Crawford swung over toward the hole. Even though Heston is replaced and I put that in quotations. Matt Cain for the time being in the rotation when you talk to people with the Giants they believe he's going to become a fixture in this rotation and needs to be well 128 games started in the minor leagues with the 3.5 ERA twice won minor league ERA titles in different leagues he was in well he strikes out to Lewitsky. so after the base hit by Blackman a double play ball and a punch out. Giants as we go to the bottom of the first inning and we glance at the Giants batting order brought to you by Southwest Airlines the newest giant Nori Aoki really swinging it well he finished last year strong with the Royals and coupled with the work he's done so far this year he has a 15 game hitting streak he'll be followed by Joe Panic, who came on last year in his rookie season good line drive spray hitter. Angel Pagano bat third. Buster Posey, the leader offensively, will bat fourth. Belt Blanco had an RBI triple yesterday. Matt Duffy at third. Brandon Crawford and Chris Heston. Obviously, they are missing and will be for uh, another several weeks. Hunter Pence, their star right fielder, he broke his forearm in spring training. He had the longest game streak going, consecutive game streak going. Prior to getting hurt in spring training. Eddie Butler's first pitch misses ball one on Aoki. And a ground ball foul. Well, Nori Aoki just had to sit there and, <laughs> and watch the ceremony. I'm sure. I'm sure it was on one hand enjoyable because he's now a giant, but on the other hand, quite painful because he was a member of the Royals who lost. Uh, that game seven last year. Here's the one one. It's outside two and one. Well, it just gives you the extra incentive to try to get back. You know, for Eddie Butler the key is going to be. How does he fare against all the lefties that are in the lineup today. That's back up the middle and it's now a 16 game hitting streak for Aoki. 
I think that's part of the story. And as we discussed during the open, how he handles, you know, a crowd in excess of 45,000 opening day here in San Francisco, the defending world champs. Joe Panic coming up. Well, all the little things that's uh, going to be in a big leaguer. You don't have this at the minor league level. I don't care if you, even if you want a triple-A championship, they don't have these type of ceremonies. So it's just an extra five minutes before you go out to pitch. Butler went five and two-thirds against the Brewers, got a no decision. That was the ball game. The Rockies had the lead late and unfortunately had to go extra innings to win. Good news is at the end of the day yeah. it was a W. That was the Willene Rosario 10th inning home run at Miller Park. Well, it was also, a good first outing for Eddie. It, it was. Five and two-thirds, five strikeouts. The double play ball when he needed it. And is this hit hard enough for two? There's one, and that's all they'll get. Smart play from DJ. That's what I missed meant by, and we'll touch on this in a moment, ground ball. There's ground balls, and then there's mishit ground balls, and that was a mishit ground ball. Let's take a look at the Rockies defensively. Dickerson's in left. Charlie Blackman in center. Cargo is in right. And it's Arenado, Tulowitzki, LeMahieu, and Morneau in that airtight infield, along with Nick Hundley doing the catching. DJ had his first air of the season yesterday, ball he backed up on, but that play and setting up before the throw to Tulo was textbook. Coach is having Pagan hit third so far this year. In the past, we've seen Angel at the top of the Giants lineup. You got the natural guy in Aoki to hit leadoff. And missing Casey McGee, who's not in the lineup today, who's a middle-of-the-order guy. Picked Pagan. him up from the Marlins to replace Pablo Sandoval, who they tried desperately to re-sign. But as you're aware, he's now with Boston. And that's a base hit. You look at the Giants' approach. They play 81 home games here. They know that... Big swings well, do not work in this facility. No, they don't because of, uh, especially at night, I know it's during the day, but you don't want to get into that approach, so you stay centered, you stay trying to get on top of the baseball. So here's Buster Posey, who had a subpar first half and a tremendous second half. And he's always hurt the Rockies. Look at those numbers on the right. 385 average, 16 home runs. Towering pop-up. This will be an infield fly rule. And you know what? Thankfully it is because there's nothing routine in the Bay Area when the ball's up in the air. Arenado thought he, he was going to make that catch, and he ended up 40 feet from it. And not 10 minutes ago, I was talking about the swirling winds here. It's not as bad as candlestick. Just watch Nolan. He's trying to get off to the side thing. You know, I've got a beat on this, Troy. No, I, I'm going to have to catch it. And he even backtracks. Nolan has the glasses, the flip glasses down. Yeah, you got you it got now. It. Here, Troy, you take it, okay? I thought I was under it, but I'm not <laughs> in the same area code. Brandon Belt. That hit him. That hit him. Base is loaded. Clip Brandon Belt on the knee. On the back knee. The guy that missed 96 games last year. Various injuries, one of them being a concussion. Yeah, there were so many reasons that it was an unlikely run to a world championship for the Giants. Number of injuries. Pitching staff got decimated. Gregor Blanco swings and misses. 
That's his changeup, and, and I think as he matures, Jeff, you'll see a little greater differential between the the fastball and the changeup. Well, that last pitch, I mean, his fastball will be 93. You want it eight to ten miles an hour. Right now, it's not more six miles an hour most of the time. But a smart call from Nick Hunley to call for the changeup. And he goes change up again. Butler's got it. And low throw handled by Morneau. So Eddie works out of it. And the Giants lead the bases loaded in the first. We'll go to inning number two at AT&T. No score. Brought to you by your hometown Toyota stores. Toyota, let's go places. By the University of Colorado, Denver. See how CU Denver learns with purpose at learnwithpurpose.org. And by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. A place uh, in the first half of the 20th century you did not want to spend time. Have you taken the tour there? Many times. Yes, it's fun. It is interesting, isn't it? Well, fun for us tour not to, to be stuck there. Not to reside <laughs> there. Alcatraz, of course, is what we're referencing. Justin Morneau steps in, and he takes ball one. Rockies had a base hit from Charlie Blackman in the first, and then Cargo grounded into a 4-6-3, and Tulowitzki struck out swinging. And Morneau has it off the uh, end of the bat. Crawford will handle it one out. You can watch a lot of tape on a new pitcher, Jeff, but so much of learning that guy will be the experience of getting in the box, I guess, right? Yeah, until you put your eyeballs on him when you're standing there. Where does the art ball come out? The arm slot, does it move? He is a four-pitch pitcher. Traditional fastball, slider, curveball, changeup mix. Giants seem to always come up with starting pitching, don't they? That's kind of their what their organization is known for. Nolan takes a strike. Arenado was 0 for 4 yesterday, snapped a five game hitting streak to begin the season. Overall, Colorado's hitting 317. That's tops in the National League. And here's something interesting. Again, small sample size, three on the road, three at home. The Rockies hit better in Milwaukee, actually, than they, than they hit at Coors Field. Well, and that's a good sign as you move forward. That was the Achilles heel at times last year. The way they swung the bat in Milwaukee. It was fun. They're not leading the big leagues. Detroit behind Miguel Cabrera. Who was just named the AL player of the week. Well, he had two straight four hit games. He, his great a career as he's had. He'll be in the Hall of Fame one day. He hadn't done that before. But they're hitting 355 collectively. That's fisted toward third. Two out. Rockies fans, you can join the conversation this season. 
Send us your thoughts and photos via your favorite social media platform. Use the hashtag Toyota Talk, and we'll get to some of those comments during Toyota Talk throughout the ballgame. Corey Dickerson with two outs to face Chris Heston. The East Carolina Pirate, Chris Heston. He moved around. He's from Florida. Actually, he's from a rival high school to Bruce Bochy, though they didn't really overlap. Well, just about 12 miles apart between yeah. the two schools. And then he went to Seminole Junior College, which is in... I'm assuming that it's two. Did he go to the one in Florida? Did he go to the one, one in, in Florida? Okay, because there's one in uh, Oklahoma also. Yes, this was the one in Florida. Dickerson with a big cut, one ball, one strike. You know how things work out at times for, for players. They, they had, had gone to an, a game to watch a catcher, and then they saw Chris and said, oh, yeah, we'll offer you a scholarship too. That's happened so many mm -hmm. times. I'll tell you one where it happened with the University of Colorado. Bill McCartney and his staff, they were, they were in Detroit recruiting. Uh, I can't remember the player's name, but... Michael Westbrook was walking down the hall and he kind of showed up a little bit on tape and that's how they ended up recruiting Michael Westbrook who I believe went fourth overall in the draft I and mean, he's a high first round pick and you know, had a good NFL career and was a star at CU. Strike three. So the Rockies trying to figure out Chris Heston. And so far, Heston has had the better of them in the first two frames. Middle of two, no score at AT&T Park. Seven, eight, nine for the Giants against Eddie Butler, and we welcome back Jenny Kavnar. Hey guys, of course, this is the first time the Rockies are seeing the Giants for the 2015 season, and some new faces that they're seeing as well. The Giants are missing, as you mentioned, Drew, earlier. Pablo Sandoval, of course, who went to the Red Sox, and Michael Morse, who's with Miami right now. Missing some power. There's the numbers from 2014. And you can see you kind of trade in some home run power, but perhaps your on-base percentage might go up with Nori Aoki. Of course, we saw him with the leadoff single here. And when you take a look at the numbers for these guys since they departed from the team, uh, the Giants combined Sandoval and Morris are hitting 283 coming into today. As for Casey McGee and Aoki, they're combined to hit 333 so far for the Giants. So perhaps they see an upgrade early on in the season. But again, I think the number one issue the Giants are dealing with right now are injuries as the Rockies are seeing them for the first time. Yeah, they're, they're dealing with the injuries. And the thing about the Giants, even last year, they, they find a way. And they're so tough here in this ballpark. They got off to a great start at AT&T last year. This is going to be a tough play for 
Blackman, and he's going to have to field it on a hop. So Duffy with the base hit. They grind really well. Well, when you play in this ballpark, you're going to have to learn how to play close games. It's just that's the way this ballpark is and always has been. So, yeah, you, you learn to play in your own environment. Brandon Crawford will take his turn. Crawford last year hit 246. He doesn't generally hit for much average, but he comes up with big hits. The grand slam in the mm -hmm. postseason last year and the game, the wild card game that beat the Pirates. In his career, he's never hit well against lefties. Last year, he hit 320 against just, lefties, but he hit only 213 against just righties. Yeah, yeah, go figure. He's been pretty much steady Eddie at a 248 average the last three years. And home runs will go up the, the longer you play. But on base percentage, does it take a whole lot of walks? Plate ball one. Let's talk about the sinker. When it's belt high or above, it tends to flatten out. Especially when he throws as hard as Eddie. One and one. When a pitch stays on the same plane, and, and that's the key for any hitter. When it has the last second movement and you have to adjust your body to try to make contact, that's when you'll get the top balls, the rollovers, or the weak fly balls. I saw a moment ago Crawford staring down at third base coach, and it's got to be unusual for the <laughs> Giants and everybody who follows the Giants and broadcasters like ourselves who see the Giants a lot. Roberto Kelly's there now. Roberto was at first base. Tim Flannery's I, now in our industry. He retired. Yeah, I saw him at the ballpark with the ceremony, but Tim was back just for today. It does say Roberto's been at first base forever. Actually, Flanner I, that sounded strange. He's in our industry. He retired. He's in our industry as a broadcaster. He retired as a coach. He just wanted to. He said, I've, I've had enough. I just want to go home, do something different. Tim is uh, one of those characters that will be missed in the game. And I mean character in, in a good way. Oh, he's a great character of the game. He's uh, fun to visit with. He's very, very bright. Talked about it in the past. Very talented guys. Quite a musician. One ball, one strike on Brandon Crawford. Good speed at first. And Duffy swung on and missed. Here's the uh, the Giants staff. Bam Bam's back. Hensley Mullins. Dave Rigetti's been a fixture with Bruce Bochy. Billy Hayes is, is now at first base. Ron Wotus has been a fixture as the bench coach for Boach. And Mark Gardner's in the bullpen. Yeah, Billy's been on the staff. He had been out in the bullpen. They moved him to first. One, two. Second. Didn't think he went around. Two and two. Pitcher on deck. Did they start the runner? This is where, if you're in the Rockies dugout, you start to look down at third base, see if you can pick up any signs from a new third base coach in Roberto Kelly. They do start him, and it works out for him because he was hit on the ground to DJ. One out, Duffy to second. Chris Heston coming up. Well, Casey McGee, you won't see uh, today and probably uh, tomorrow as he had to have, he has a knee situation. He had to have a cortisone shot. 
And he had done it earlier in the week and making a play twisted, didn't feel right. They were worried that it was going to be more than just a bone bruise, but it wasn't. Casey played for many clubs. The Brewers had a huge year there four or five years ago. Went yeah. over to Japan for a couple years. Was with the Cubs and then Miami last year. Remember what he did to the Rockies opening series? Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just the Rockies. He got off to a tremendous start for Miami last year. By the way, did you see that swing by Haston? You got you to pay uh, attention. You do. That was a pretty good looking swing. On the ground to second. And it was a slider. The, the guy that's going to notice it, uh, in addition to the pitcher, more than anybody, obviously, is the catcher. And that's why uh, I think Nick Conley threw down three fingers. Why not? Just don't give him a free fastball. I see Nick studies the game. He saw the swing. There's no rule that says you have to throw a pitcher a fastball. Throw him a slider. Throw him a, throw him a curveball if you see his knees buckling. And now you have Nori Aoki. Aoki singled up the middle last inning. Two outs, no score. Bottom of two. We were chatting with Nick before the ball game, and he loves playing here. As I think it's probably a split. Some of the players don't like it as much because the environment, especially at night, can be really cold. But there's a consensus that the crowds are so great they're into baseball there is an electric atmosphere certainly here on opening day that's obvious but even you know when you come in the middle of the season well 328 consecutive sellouts we were talking to Carlos Gonzalez in the dugout before the game he said as much 2-0 3 and 0 that's just like what we experienced back home this past weekend, averaging over 44,000 fans a game, almost 45,000, 134,000 for the three game set. It has to get you up oh, as a it player. does. I mean, you like playing in front of large crowds. You don't you don't like to be able to hear the beer vendor yelling out or the hot dog guy. <laughs> yeah, not a good sign. No. right? And that's ball four. So Eddie Butler walks Aoki and now that'll bring up Joe Panic. How much abuse did he take growing up? Oh. <laughs> Panic last year, 8 for 25 against the Rockies. How about this uh, from the Baseball Hall of Fame? 1954 future Hall of Famer Hank Aaron makes his big league debut for the Braves, the Milwaukee Braves. Paul Egan's mentor in baseball. Yes. Paul Egan's the Rockies traveling secretary. That might come back. Don't give up on it. Giants in losing three consecutive ball games to the Padres were outscored 17 to 6. And four of those runs came yesterday. They lost 6 to 4 yesterday. Will Nieves, former Rocky, hit a grand slam against Jake Peavy. Runner going and it's fouled off. Well, a side note on that grand slam that was his first one of his career. And also, you know, the, the first guy that he caught in his big league debut? Jake Peavy. Jake Peavy. Back with San Diego. And that was Jake's return to Petco. Buster Posey said he had pretty good stuff. It was a flat slider that he threw to Will. Find about two rows deep in left field. That's what LaTroy said after the ball game. He said, I threw a, I threw a, somebody said, was it a slider? And, and he <laughs> said, Detroit's a stand-up guy. He said no, it was a cement mixer, and at this level, cement mixers get hit really That's far. That's bad. Every time you hear cement mixer. 0-2. Blocked by Hunley. 
he wanted it, that that was a slider a back foot slider and that's the pitch that mm -hmm. Mike McHenry wanted and obviously Latroy wanted. Well you know the hole of Dexter where where his hole is in his swing and it's down on the back foot. But that one with the shadows it just stayed there like a. Like a BP fastball. And the runner goes and he'll steal second so Aoki in scoring position and it's now two and two. That's the first stolen base for the Giants this year. Teams have been successful six out of seven times so far against the Rockies. Duffy singled. He's at third. They're two outs. Aoki at second. Joe Panic with a two and two count. And see on those three oh. pitches there by Eddie, honestly, they weren't close. No. No, you, you're not going to induce a swing at the, at the big league level on a pitch that misses by a foot. No, you recognize where the pitch is right out of the hand. So it's not even a thought that I'm going to swing at it. And now he'll deal with the bases loaded again. Two straight innings. And this time it'll be Pagan. Two walks, a hit batter. Butler... Uh -huh. It, it was interesting. The first inning, he faced six hitters, but he threw only 12 pitches, which is almost unheard of. But you, this trend can't continue, clearly. No, and 34 pitches, 17 strikes, 17 balls. That's not the ratio that you're looking for. That was just part of the problem on this last homestand. Too many walks given up by the by the starters. Pagan bounces this slowly to Morneau and Butler gets over. Well done. So Eddie Butler makes another pitch when he has to and he'll get off the field. The Giants have left six on in the first two innings. And Jenny Kavnar, I'm Drew Goodman. Nick Hunley will be first. We were chatting with the Rocky center fielder Charlie Blackman about the Giants and their run to another world championship. And here's what he had to say. You know, I, I really hate to give them credit. Um, yes, they've won. That's something that I can't take away from them. I just don't know how they've done it. Like, you know, on paper, I'm like, this isn't the best team. Uh, but you got to respect them for, you know, Maybe they didn't have the most talent, uh, but they've somehow managed to figure it out and get it done, which is, that's what it all comes down to. Well, at the end of the day, that's the bottom line, and so you have to tip your cap and, and appreciate that they got it done. I, I agree. I don't think they were the best team, 1 through 25. No. 
But they had the best guy at the end of Madison Bumgarner. In fact, I was talking to Ron Wotus, who I have great respect for, the bench coach for the Giants earlier today, and he said the same thing. He said, you know, during the season, there were times I didn't even think we were a, a, a very good baseball team, but we survived. He said, the one thing about this club is they play hard every single day, and we use this term a lot, Jeff, they grind. And in the postseason, things fell into place. They scored well, an inordinate a number of runs in the postseason without the benefit <laughs> of a hit. They, they had good fortune. But at the end, guess what? They, they were the last one standing. Well, that's, what, that's what makes what they did. Going as a wild card team, we always talk about oh, winning your division. To me, that's the hardest thing to do is to win your division. And once you get there in a shorter series, as you say, anything can happen. Three and two on Nick Huntley. We just showed the graphic a moment ago. The wild card team since 95 that have won it all. I mean, it, it's happened, you know, in the neighborhood of 30% of the time. Nick got a hanger and he puts his just foul. Crawford had to bail the last moment. So here are the teams that, as a wild card, have won it all. The Cards did it in. In 2011, Boston finally won after the long drought. 2004, Florida, both times they've done it, was as a wild card. I, I know the purists years ago, you know, they, they put their fingers over their nose and squeezed their nose. They didn't want a wild card. It, it, it has been great for baseball. Yes. The, the additional wild card, I think, is great for baseball. You play 162 games. We look at the other sports in comparison where a number of teams get a chance to go to the the postseason tournament. It's been outstanding for baseball. Giants last year in the regular guys. season won 88 games. Yeah, the Rockies went to the World Series as a wild card team. They did. And maybe early on, before you know the wild card, the first couple of years, I might have been one of those guys that said, "Yeah, I'm not sure," but I've really grown to like it and the excitement that it brings. And it's not just what happens in the postseason. It, Jeff, it keeps what? so many more teams in it those final four uh, to six weeks, right? Or even up to the last day. Yep. And Nick Huntley, a good at bat, draws a walk. So the second base runner for the Rockies, if you're just coming aboard, Charlie Blackman led the game off with a bullet up the middle, almost took Chris Heston's head off, but he was erased on a double play ground ball. Hits through the first six games. Dante had 13 hits in his first six games. Larry Walker had 13, 2001. DJ, a dozen hits in the first six ball games. How about Charlie Blackman at the bottom of that list? He had 12. He had six of them last year on opening day. Six in one <laughs> ball game. But more than any, yeah, you talk about the 12 hits, but how many have been big hits? Early, yeah. DJ is a rock star. Yesterday, the the triple into the gap to score three runs with two outs. I don't know if Wall will do this, but Nick Hundley's a good athlete. I know he's a catcher, and you have a great hit and run guy at the plate in Lemayhu. One and zero. Oh. He takes off, and he tried to protect him. The throw by Posey's going to get him. Great call. I, I have no problem with that call. You are spot on, Drew. But the pitch was so bad in the other batter's box that there was nothing DJ could do. And then notice the throw from Buster just from his knees. I mean, you couldn't hit this if you had a boat paddle. And then from the knees, when you know it's a hit and run for a catcher, just get it out there and let the shortstop apply the tag. And because the Giants are aware of you know, the spray chart with LeMayhew, they changed up their coverage at the back. Well, you'll change up coverage not only on the hitter, but the, the pitch location. So they saw it was going to be away. DJ hits the ball to the right side. That's, that's a call that is on the shortstop to say, I'm going to take this. Even if he rolls it over in the hole, I'll tell the manager what was going on. Mayhew hits one to right. Blanco's out there. Two outs. No, I like the call as well by Walt because, yeah. you know, a 1-0 pitch, this kid's been in the strike zone with Heston, and you have a great contact guy up there in LeMahieu. And the worst pitch he threw was that hit-and-run pitch. Yeah, that was his biggest that, miss. Yeah, and then 29 pitches. Who wants tacos? If the Rockies score seven or more during any ball game, go to participating Colorado Taco Bell locations the next day. Do it between 4 and 6 to get your Rockies taco special. Live Moss at Taco Bell. Two outs, nobody on for Eddie Butler. And 
Yeah. Eddie takes a strike. Butler looking for his first big league hit. Big star at Radford in Virginia was the Big South Pitcher of the Year. Curveball. Third strikeout for Hested as he has faced the minimum through the first three innings. No score at AT&T Park opening day for the Giants. As we welcome you back to AT&T Park, headed to the bottom of the third where Busty, Buster Posey will kick things off for the Giants. Buster Posey following suit from last season so far in just a week of baseball. He has four RBIs, two home runs. In fact, he's part of a trio in the National League from 2014 that had 20-plus home runs and a 300-plus batting average. Corey Dickerson also in that trio after he hit 312 last year with 24 home runs. How about this, guys? Corey Dickerson on pace right now, by the way, for 52 home runs this year because he has two under his belt right now. And he's also on pace for 234 RBIs because he leads <laughs> baseball with nine RBIs. I just did some quick math down here. I also did some quick math because it's Drew's birthday. So happy birthday to our very own Drew Goodman. Jenny, that's very nice of you. You didn't have to do much math on that. <laughs> no, I... A two and a nine. Wait a second. There's What's like that? a no, five no, and another no, number in there, no. too, but I can't I, remember which order they go in. It's 52. It, it is 52, and I've, and I've caught you yes, once again, finally, briefly. Finally. Until August. Until August. But now we can say we're the same age. 52. Congratulations. Yeah, I don't have to Happy. respect you as much as you're not <laughs> older than me for a while. <laughs> you know, respect your elders today. It's Hunter you. Pence's birthday today, too, but he's only 32. You know, I'm a lot happier than Hunter is today because Hunter wants to play, and mm -hmm. I'm exactly where I want to be. And um, they miss Hunter Pence. That's right. He's 32. 32. 20 years, on 20 years on Hunter Pence. But thank you. Shift is on. One out with Posey gone. And Bell. Oh, oh, DJ, stop it. Cut it out. How about <laughs> that play? That's why he wears a gold glove, first and foremost. But when he dives, that ball goes into his glove more than anybody that I've seen since probably Robbie Alomar. Robbie could dive and make that play. But DJ, when he catches it, it sticks in that webbing, and he knows how much time. There's no panic in what happens after he catches it. Two outs. What a beautiful play by LeMayu. This defense in the infield, it's just ridiculous. Here's Gregor Blanco. He just has to give you confidence if you're standing on the hill 60 feet, 6 inches away. Go ahead and hit it on the ground, boys. 
I was talking to Dan O'Dad recently about DJ and, and his defense, and, and he was going on about how great a defensive player we both were. He is. He said the only guy I've seen better w was Robbie Alomar, and Dan was in the front office when Robbie was playing in Cleveland. Our good friend Jack Corrigan on the radio side was calling the Indians back then, and 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 he basically said the same thing. And that's that's to be no. placed in the same well, category as Robbie Alomar defensively. Yeah, Hall of Famer Robbie Alomar. I said it. He took many hits away from me, but also had the pleasure of playing with him in Baltimore. You liked it a lot better that way, right? Well, yes and no. I mean, he played every day, so I didn't so get, to get to play much. much. <laughs> <laughs> but watching him was, was a treat. 2 1, and that is fair. And it's going to shoot into the left field corner. Dickerson throws his hands up. It'll be a ground rule double. So Gregor Blanco, who was hitting just 182 coming in, is at second with two outs for Matt Duffy. They wanted the ball down and in, and it was up and away. And they missed his spot by probably at least a foot. A couple bounces and then up onto the railing into the stands. Matt Duffy singled his first time up. Seventh base runner for the Giants. They left the bases loaded in the first and the second. Duffy last year won the Eastern League batting title in double A ball. He hit 332. Giants 0 for 4 today with runners in scoring position, just above a 200 clip on the season. Well, they're three for their last 30 over the last four and a half ball games with runners in scoring position. Kenzie Mullins to the left of Bruce Bochy, 2 0 on Duffy. And he's been able to make the big pitches so far. 2 and 1. This is part of the growth. I mean, very few guys, even as talented and as hyped as a guy like Eddie Butler has been, very few guys just arrive at, and that was. <laughs> that was, pitch, great, yeah. great movement. You just show up and all of a sudden yeah. they pitch like they're Sandy Koufax. It doesn't work that way. There's a process. There is because you, you're facing big league hitters. There's there's no easy outs in the lineup. But in, in, even down in the AAA, there might be four or five guys on a good team that are that are good, but there's another three or four that you can pitch around. Well, even if you're hitting eighth in the major league level, you're better than those guys that are hitting, you know, second, two, three, four down in triple A. Maybe not have some of the power, but that's that's where that learning process and having guys like a Steve Foster and a Darren Holmes, those guys to help you out to speed up the process. Two, two, three, and two. Forty eight pitches in given the traffic that's you know not an alarming number at all with two outs in the third inning. If you're 15 to 17 mm -hmm. pitches per inning it's pretty good space to be in. Nice. Two out double is placed Blanco at second. Three and two on Duffy. The slider. Oh, oh. oh. Ooh, boy real close at 96. But Trip Gibson the home plate umpire said no. Nope. The ball. Well, and I was just looking down, and, and Tripp was whispering something into Nick Hunley's ear because Eddie took a step thinking it was a strike on the Ford strike zone. Probably just about a width of a baseball off the black, if that much. Tough pitch to take. You take it because you can't hit it. Brandon Crawford. Topped one to DJ his first time up. Crawford used to wear out the Rockies. 364 average his first 33 games against the Rockies. Last 27, he's hit just 191. And 
This one will be gloved by Morneau over to Butler. And Eddie again able to work out of a little traffic jam. He's safely through the third. We'll go to the fourth. Still no score. It'll be the top of the order for Colorado when we come back. have had a hit and a walk so far but both were erased one on a caught stealing one on a double play Charlie had a base hit his first time up eight left on for the Giants in the first three innings so round two for the Rockies against Chris Heston and the first pitch to Blackman's down low ball one Rocky's trying to bounce back from a very difficult loss yesterday. Up a couple runs in the ninth inning. And another base hit for Blackman. Boy, is he ever hot. Three hits yesterday for Charlie's. Two for two this afternoon. His average up over 300. 308. Yeah, he had. He was the only guy virtually who, who had a tough start in Milwaukee. Everybody else came home well, hitting about 380. Well, he and Morneau. Yeah, more no. Those were the two. And you know they're going to hit. Mm -hmm. Blackman, an all-star last year. Justin Morneau, the National League reigning batting champion. Here's Cargo. He hit into a 4-6-3 his first time up. Tried to lay down a bunt. Cargo in his career against the Giants has hit just 223 which is a shockingly low number for a guy as gifted as as Carlos and not surprisingly that's the worst he's hit against any team in baseball that he has uh, substantive at bats against and a guy that's not going to be affected by wind because he can cut through it with his swing and his power though he did say yesterday the ball he hit the dead center off the wall for a double ordinarily would have been out but it was right into the teeth of the wind now feel very deep for cargo here's the 0 one and again it chopped to first and belt will make the tag that super sinker really working for Heston well but this, the scoring position goes Blackman yeah and this is what they're going to see from Heston today they saw it the first time around the fastball about 59 percent of the time slider curveball starting to throw it more 
and more each outing and then and, and the changeup. And, and you're wondering what the speeds are for Heston. Fastball average 90 miles an hour, the slider and curveball 77, 76 respectively, and then the changeup at 83. Got Tulowitzki on a slider his first time up. If Troy can make the adjustment. Make the crowd dislike him that much more. <laughs> that's, that's when you know you've arrived. When you get you get booed by the opposing fans. One out. This ball roped down the left field line, and the Rockies will break the ice first. Troy Tulowitzki coming through, driving home Charlie Blackman. one nothing Colorado. Well, the curveball. Tulo does it to the Giants again. That's why you need to see a pitcher with your own set of eyes. Flat curveball. It might have been a slider. You can't tell from that the rotation on the ball because it was so bad, but that's what great hitters do. They take advantage of those bad pitches and drive in runs. For Troy, his fifth RBI of the season. One more look at the swing from Troy. Just the hips and everything working together and the power that coming off the back leg to get hidden through that baseball. A one on Morneau, and that's pretty hard. And through the middle of the diamond, a base hit to Lewitsky will long stride it to third. First and third one out for Arenado. Up for Justin, he came in hitting 316 against the Giants in his career, and it'll go up. Sinking. Fastball wanted away from him. See if he'd roll over. Justin, too good of a hitter, hit it past the diving Joe Panic. Most Southern California or Northern California infields are quick. Did you find uh, AT&T to be quick? Yes, because the wind will dry out whatever moisture's in the in the grass and the dirt. Nolan, ground ball to short. It's going to be two. That's a shame. Rockies will get just one. But they have a lead here in the fourth inning against the Giants. Mustang, head-turning and heart-pounding, Ford go further. 
by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. And by CenturyLink, your link to what's next. Rockies got an RBI base hit from Troy Tulowitzki. They're up 1-0. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Heston, and then the top of the order for the Giants. Eddie Butler's first pitch is chopped over the Giant dugout. 0-1. Eddie had, has had traffic out on the base pass, but when he needed to, he's come up with the big pitch. Eight ground ball outs, just one fly out. You know, both of these guys are getting a lot of ground balls. I I'm really impressed so mm -hmm. far with Heston. And that's a swing and a miss, so it's one and two. And I'm impressed with what Eddie's done. As you mentioned, Huey, he has not folded under the no. pressure of a lot of traffic early in the huge crowd. And he's been able to make a big pitch when necessary. He's got, you know, three mishit ground balls to end the innings. Well, with the bases loaded in the first two innings, and then last inning he had first and second. Gets the out. Two balls, two strikes. Tulo throws out Heston for the first out of the inning. One of my favorite days at Coors Field, the Weather and Science Day. Teachers bring your students, enjoy nine news and CSU Little Shop of Physics for Weather and Science Day on April 23rd. Register your class by calling 303 Rockies. If you haven't been, you need to go. All the Weather and science projects out there, it's a pretty neat event. Was science one of your favorite subjects or least favorite subjects? It was one of my least favorites, I'm going to be honest with you. I really enjoyed P.E. <laughs> <laughs> so did I. I didn't know that was a core class, though. Well, Some days I was some hoping it was. Nori Aoki with two at bats, a single, and a walk. And that's foul. Oh. Hey, the 16 game hitting streak dating back to last year in the regular season with the Royals for Aoki, the longest now of his career. He had a 15 gamer when he was playing with the Brewers. He doesn't strike out very often. He'll just slap the ball, get it down on the ground, try to run. Good hitter. He is. Huh. Adrian Gonzalez with his five home runs was the National League Player of the, the Week. Go figure. Huh. And look at this. There was a slap. That was the slap. You got to hustle if you're Dickerson, and he will. That's the only way he plays. He holds Aoki to a single. That's exactly what he did. He slapped it the other way. Almost like what you see in, in, in softball, where they're running out of the box as they're making contact. His foot's down. He's slapping at the ball. And the over half of his hits, if not more, to the left side. Panic, a ground out, and a walk. Butler looking in at the signs from Nick Hundley. And 
Panic takes ball one. Joe Panic, he's a New York area kid. He went to St. John's where he was an All American, also an academic All American. Gets by and fortunately not yes. far enough for Aoki to advance. Rockies made four errors yesterday for just the 23rd time in their history. Well, because Justin had to cut in front of him to go get the baseball, that kept Aoki at first base. Gave a little body check. Yeah. Wasn't intentional. Rockies only won three of those games where they had that many miscues. The interesting thing is, you know, the Rockies aren't going to make a lot of errors as long as they're able to keep this group on the field. And they were flawless the first four games of the season. Two and zero on panic, and three and zero. And he's walked three and he's hit a batter. Here comes Tulowitzki. Smart play from Troy to come in. He slow things down for a moment for Eddie. Start rushing your delivery. But, you know, Troy is, we've said this many times, Troy's candid. He's candid with the media and mm -hmm. he's candid with his teammates. That's four walks back to back ball games. So you know, Eddie flirting with danger each inning. The Rockies up one nothing, but now with two on, you have Angel Pagan with Buster Posey on deck. There's one out. There's five walks by Rockies pitchers yesterday, five. It's been with the rotation yes. because the bullpen. And I know, obviously, Latroy's had struggles in his first couple of outings. But everybody else, nobody's given up a, uh, an earned run in the bullpen other than Latroy. And there, no, nobody's walking anybody in the bullpen. But as you mentioned, the starters, Kyle Kendrick the other day had five. Tyler Matzik had four on Friday. And that's five straight out of the zone. Rockies bullpen has 24 strikeouts, only three walks. The gods a, a difference maker. Last year, they won 61% of the time when he was available. Without him, they were eight games below 500. They have surgery for a bulging disc. Huntley's going to go out now. Where if you're Walt too, you, you you're not only managing for today's game. You know that Christian Bergman's going tomorrow. That the, he's probably not stretched out more than four or five innings tops. Probably be Friedrich or Brooks Brown if you had to eat up middle innings. You hope that's not the case. No. Listen, Butler's got to no, remember. Well, and, and I'm, still... I'm leading this game one nothing. <laughs> I'm I'm one pitch away right. from getting out of the inning. Get a ground ball here, and that's what he's he's done in the first three innings. Thank you. Yeah, you, you six straight out of the zone. Is that is that? Well, I know you're the three hole hitter, but is this wise? Uh, not, not, not looking at the pitch, right? Yeah, you're not looking at the pitch. You're guessing the whole way, and maybe that's the pitch that that gets it back on track for Eddie. That's a two zero changeup. Yeah, I'll see if the Rockies can turn one. There's one. There's two. Well done. One pitch away, as we said. So Eddie Butler living dangerously. But he'll head to the dugout with the Rockies in front. one nothing, And we turn the page to inning number five at AT&T Park.
Challenge called the Subaru Eyesight Review will determine the outcome. Love, it's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. Corey Dickerson will be first to face Chris Heston here in the fifth. Then Nick Hundley and DJ LeMahieu. You want to talk about hot starts? How about DJ and Corey Dickerson both hitting over 400? And both uh, entered the ball game with six game hitting streaks. Corey called out on strikes his first time up. DJ hit a fly ball to right. They're both asked to hit in different spots already in the lineup on this short season. Corey hit leadoff. Today he's hit sixth. DJ's hit eighth. Also hit ninth. And Dickerson, I mean, how strong this lineup is. He led the club in home runs last year with 24. It's curveball that misses ball one. Most of the time, with this lineup intact, he'll hit six. And that's a pretty nice bat to have. Well, I mean, six. You know, we've already said it a bunch of times that the, the, the length of this lineup and pick your poison and who do you want to try to pitch to. You run through the gauntlet of Blackman, Gonzalez, Tulowitzki, Morneau, Arenado, and then you come up and you've got Corey. Ball and a strike on Dickerson. Way inside, two and one. Good job yeah, up there. Uh, you're in, right? Janice, our stage manager, brought us some. You ate it all. I already did. And why not? Had it before lunch. Be the same way you play in the big leagues at. You never gain any weight. Good for you. you make everybody hate you. <laughs> <laughs> Two and two. Good eye. Three and two. Rockies averaging 5.8 runs a game. Swung on and fouled off. The average so far through one week of games, 4.17 in baseball. The Giants averaging just 3.9. 3.29, I should say, not 3.9. You know, the Rockies went 5-5 five and five in this ballpark last year, but they hit just 2.11 here. And that, we've said this so yeah. many times, there's so many 2-1, 3-2, one nothing games here that you're not going to come out here and hit... 380. Well, that's pretty much the whole series. There was nine one-run games against San Francisco last year and three two-run games. He's coming back. Watch a collision. Ooh. Well, that ball was about six or seven rows deep into the stands before the wind caught it. Well, Duffy overran where it was going to be. Crawford had the better angle. Well, we saw that on the pop-up with uh, between Nolan and Troy. And this is the advantage of playing in your ballpark if you're Brandon Crawford. Because he took a peek as he was running where the stands were, and he knew how much distance he had once he crossed the foul line. Hundley takes ball one. This is how, uh, we'll show you in a moment how close this series between these two teams has been. The Rockies have really picked it up and played well against a team that had been their nemesis for so long. One and one. Since 2013, 38 encounters. Both teams have won 19 times. Both teams scoring 4.7 runs. The batting average is pretty close. The home runs, the ERA. I mean, look at it. Everything's almost identical. This is a huge chopper that's going to be fed by Duffy 2X.
Fans, don't forget that Coors Field, it's available year-round for special events, and most areas of the ballpark can be reserved. Call 303 Rockies for more information. It includes meetings, receptions, weddings, and more. Book your event at Coors Field. A strike on LeMay here. 55 pitches for Chris Heston, 37 strikes, only 18 balls. He's, he's pounding the strike zone. Yeah, the one pitch that he made a mistake, Troy made him pay. Rockies up one nothing. Nine left on for the Giants, one left on for the Rockies. Four hits for the Rockies, five for San Francisco. One and two. Two and two on DJ. Mayhew going without sleeves. That's uh, not a normal sight in San Francisco. <laughs> this is up the middle with topspin, and that's a good play by Panic, and Belt can't handle it. They may get DJ a hit. They should. Yeah, I mean, that's it, a difficult play for Panic. I would think he'd get a knock there. And they did indeed give him a base hit. Seven game hitting streak for LeMayhew. And now 13 for 27 on the season. That just ejected out of the glove of Brandon Belt. Off the thumb. In, the, in between pick, but for panic, you're running away from, from first base, and you have to make sure you start the ball up high enough. Well, if you're wondering, what's the longest hitting streak in Rockies history to begin a season? DJ's got some work left. 14 games right out of the shoot 1994 by one Ellis Burks who still looks like he could play and sometimes that term that phrase is thrown around oh man he looks like he'd still play Ellis Burks looks like he yes. could play tomorrow what a good man well and, and the knowledge that he brings when he's at spring training and around the ball club he's a great guy to, mm -hmm. to have around and Someone to lean on. Yep. And I like what's happened. You know, the, a couple years from now, we'll be talking about the first quarter century of mm -hmm. Colorado Rockies baseball. You start to develop, you know, certain traditions, and you start to to be able to look back and have a a nice roster of former players that had great careers. I mean, Larry Walker comes to spring training now. The last couple of years. Pedro Estacio. Pedro Estacio is around the club all the time. Ellis Burks around the club all the time. Dante Bichette obviously has been involved with the club. Butler goes down swinging. We're in the middle of the fifth inning. The Rockies have the only run. DJ has a seven game hitting streak.
one nothing the hits even to Lewitsky drove in Blackman for the Rockies. Eddie Butler's had a lot of traffic, but he's been able to wiggle out of it, getting a 4-6-3 double play in the fourth inning. A couple ground outs to Justin Morneau ended threats as well. Buster Posey, Brandon Belt, Gregor Blanco, 4-5-6 and six for the Giants. And a slider to begin things, and Posey takes a strike. A pop to short and a ground ball to third for Buster Posey thus far. Leading the club with a couple of home runs. And Posey goes the other way and Cargo will jog near the line and make the catch one out. Good sequence there from Eddie Butler. And don't just pump fastballs in there and that's what he did. He started him off with the slider and worked him away. Can't say enough about the job of Nick Hunley and leading the pitching staff. I couldn't agree more. I mean, Nick's been terrific, high energy, studious guy who understands, like most catchers do, his first priority. Not that Nick doesn't have offensive ability, but he knows his first priority every day is to help out the guy he's going to work with on the mound and then anybody who comes in behind him. And he had to learn a, a whole new staff. This is got a good mentor now, and Renee Latchman, the former big league manager who handles the Rockies' big league catchers. Here's a 2 0 on Bell. Outside, 3 0. Belt had a large spring, 357 average down in Scottsdale with four home runs. Seen at 95. We've seen a 96 today. It's good to see that velocity back up. Here's the payoff pitch. And this is in the air to shallow left near the line. Dickerson comes out of control <laughs> and makes the catch. Well, it's uh an adventure it's every time that pick. ball's in the air. The swirling winds. It's a lot worse at Candlestick years ago. Enter the 7th Annual Boys and Girls Club of Metro Denver Dreamhouse Raffle. Your chance to win a $2.5 million home or $2 million in cash. You'll also help out a wonderful cause. Visit milehighraffle.com for more information. With two outs and nobody on, Gregor Blanco, who doubled with two outs in the third inning, will come up. High ball one. Two and out. Fourth season in a giant uniform for Gregor Blanco. Next pitch will be the 80th for Butler. Touches the outside corner. It's two and one. Butler just 12 for 24 in first pitch strikes. Three and one. Well, think about the World Series. Game seven, they start two guys, what in Perez and Blanco in the outfield, who really were extra outfielders. Yes. Fourth, fifth type. Butler loses Blanco. That's his fifth walk. Well, we're not the only ones that want to wish you a happy birthday. A tweet from the Rockies. Let's take a moment to wish our very, a very happy birthday to our good friend at Drew Goodman 42. <laughs> Where else would he spend it but in the booth? No place better. Thank you very much. That's Greatly appreciate that. We'll do dinner tonight, too. Thank you. Okay. 
I look forward to that, you know, because I'm really good at eating. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> that is an understatement. Inside corner, a strike on Matt Duffy. I eat like I'm 6'4", 240. Yes. Not doing life what you're good at. 0-1 mm -hmm. on Duffy. Two outs, Blanco at first. Good speed there. Round ball, foul. Nolan says, I'm not sure if it's going to be foul, but I'm going after it. Got that youthful mm -hmm. bounce in his step every single day. Boy, he loves to play. Just elevates everybody else's mood. Yeah, if you happen to be dragging yep. in the middle of the season and you see Arenado bound up the stairs of the dugout, you say, man, I got to get ready. I feel good. Blanco was uh, leaning a little bit, wasn't he? He was. Some guys like to run 0-2. Other guys will wait to 1-2. We just saw the, the sign where you kind of grab your throat if you're Roberto Kelly. I'll see that. I'll see where they cover the uh, the hat up or maybe the belt saying don't run. That's what that sign will mean. Or maybe it was just a decoy. takes off on this pitch. Tends to be more of a running pitch. He goes. Swung out of miss. It's Better. academic. Good pitch by Eddie Butler as he strikes out Matt Duffy. And we'll move on to the sixth inning. The Rockies continue to lead Classiest uh, guys you and I have had the yes. good fortune to be around in the game of baseball. 
Rockies have the top of the order trying to build on a 1-0 lead. Charlie Blackman is 2-for-2. Two two. He has seen Chris Heston really well. And Heston says, you know what? He's ripped my sinker <laughs> up the middle a couple times. I'm not times. throwing that. I'm going to start him with a curveball. That's off the end of the bat. And one out. Cargo coming up. He's 0 for 2. Well, Dollar Hot Dogs are back for the 2015 season in the first 10,000 on Tuesday, April 21st. We'll receive a coupon for one. Hot Dog, get your tickets now. Dollar Hot Dog. Tuesday, April 21st against the new look San Diego Padres. Outside ball one on Cargo. Cargo's hit the very top of the baseball twice. Uh, four, six, three double play and a chopper to first. Inside two and oh. Cargo was chatting us up before the ball game in the dugout, talking about watching Barry Bonds when he was a minor league player. When he first came here, he was so disappointed that Bonds had, he was no longer playing. From a hitting standpoint, all the other stuff, from a hitting standpoint, he was without peer. Ball four, four pitch walk to Cargo. So speed aboard for the Rockies here with one out. And Troy Tulowitzki approaching the plate. Brooks Brown just got up and started throwing a moment ago in the bullpen. 86 pitches. Yeah, well, you know, Walt, I, I would think, is going to run Butler back out there and, and see how it goes. But there's been five walks, and as you said, 80, 86 pitches. So you don't want to get caught. No. All of a sudden, we're... You know, things go awry, and you have to try to get somebody up in a hurry. So Brown starts the process right now. Well, did Car make. Cargo's that, and you know, we've talked about this many times, brings five tools to the to the ballpark every day. He didn't have his legs last year. He had a bad knee injury. He had knee surgery, as you're all well aware. He's running again. So now, whereas last year, not a threat to steal bases, he is again. Well, and that's what was noted even when he went first to third in spring training on that pass ball. Oh, so, yeah, the legs are good. So all the scouts put that in their scouting report when they have the meetings before a series, your advanced scout. Steve that, Balboni is the advanced scout for the San Francisco Giants. See that pitch on the fourth strike zone. Tulo thought it was low, and it looks like it was low. Instead of 1-1, one, one, it's 0-2. Troy singled in the Rockies' only run. That was in the fourth. Only run in this game. One and two. What was your, when you were on base and you had a slugger at the plate, what, what was your philosophy, your upper run, middle innings? Well, I, I was always had the green light. So if I was looking to steal, even with the big guy, you know, big bopper at the plate. Strike three. Locked him up on a curveball. Boy, that's the first time today that he has started that curveball out at a right-handed hitter. The rest of them he started out on the outside corner and worked away. And that's probably just a backup curveball that Troy was backing up from. But that's not where Buster Posey wanted it. Five strikeouts. For Chris Heston, Moynos one for two. And to get to make one final point on, on stealing with big guys at the plate and RBI guys, and, but sometimes you'll get that sign from the manager, the stop sign. I don't want you to run here, and maybe with Justin you don't because you want to keep that hole between first and second. Keep the, the first baseman on the back so he doesn't move back and have bigger range. See, I weighed that. Tell me what you think here. 
you know, that, that old philosophy, you know, he's going to get an extra 8, 10 feet in that three and a half hole. I weigh that versus having a guy in scoring position I, in a yeah, tight right. ball game. I'd rather have him, if he can get there, steal second. Morneau sprays the ball anyhow. It's fouled off to the left side. One and one. Yeah, and both are valid points. It just depends on how, how you're feeling in the dugout as a manager. Do I want that? Do I... And part of it, listen, listen, part of it's time to the plate. Part mm -hmm. of it's a math equation. Eric Young's got a stopwatch, all first basemen do, and he, he's first timing. First base coaches. First base coaches. Excuse me. Yeah, it'd be odd for first <laughs> baseman. You know, is he, is he is one one to the plate? Well, you're not going to run. Going. No. One and two. See if he takes off here. One well, the outfielders for the Giants play pretty deep. Looking at all of them from left field over to right field. How deep they are. So there's plenty of green grass behind the infield. You get a blooper. If he takes off running, he could score from first. He hit one up triples alley. Mm -hmm. He's out to 421 in right center field. Not going inside. He changed his time. And that's one way to. Kind of freeze the feet of a runner. Kind of held the baseball an extra count or two. Freezing it, slide step, multiple looks, all of the above. And it's on the ground a second. Middle of inning number six, Rockies leading one nothing. to the bottom of the sixth. Well, the news of the day for the Rockies is what are they going to do with their closer position after one week of baseball with Troy Hawkins? Two blown saves, including yesterday. So Walt Weiss, addressing the media today, said he pulled Latroy into his office, had a good conversation with him, said he's going to let him step back and have a breather in that role. And here was Latroy Hawkins' reaction. This is baseball. I'm not surprised by anything. I'm not surprised by anything. But... It's nothing I hadn't been through before, and I've always risen back to the top, so it's all good. Latroy Hawkins, of course, always a professional at 42 years of age when he talked to the media earlier today, said, I knew we were going to need help in that position today. He told me there's no ego down in the bullpen right now, and he's okay with the position that he's in. Of course, for Walt Weiss, plenty of options with who they're going to go with as the closer for the time being. Again, this is a day-to-day -day thing right now. He's going to try and mix and match, and it's really going to be fluid as each day goes on. He did announce today if it comes to a safe situation in the ninth inning, that will belong to Rafael Betancourt, of course, the former Rockies closer who went through Tommy John surgery 
back in the 2013 season and made his way onto this roster. He has been hot in that bullpen. And just to follow it up with one more thing, uh, the new bullpen coach, in Darren Holmes told me earlier, this is a unique group of guys. I've never seen the kind of chemistry in a bullpen like these guys have. You have a mix of veterans and some young, great arms. So the fact that Latroy Hawkins is okay with situation right now, I think that tells the other pitchers that they need to be okay with the situation right now, guys. Well, a lot there, Jenny. Thank you very much for that report. And if you're wondering why Rafael Betancourt coming off Tommy John, though he's pitched exceptional baseball so far, that's for today. Adam Ottavino with John Axford with his family right now would probably be the next in line. But Ottavino's worked, uh, he worked mm -hmm. four outs yesterday. He also worked on Saturday, so he's probably down today. And, you know, the situation remains fluid. The good news is, and that's what Jennings talking about, Darren Holmes. And Walt Weiss earlier, there, there's a lot of guys who either have done it or are capable of doing it. Betancourt's done it, Axford's done it, and obviously, in terms of stuff, nobody has the stuff of Adam Adovino. But that's where depth comes in, and that's what you need in the bullpen, and, and that's what the Rockies went out and they, they added some depth, and that's, that's key because you're always in a fluid situation. Well, Eddie, they, they, Eddie Butler's even, walked six guys now including Brandon Crawford. He, he was set up for him. And yes. then you had the, the eighth-place hitter at the plate and then the pitcher, and they're not going to pull Heston. No, but that's also why he, he came back out for the bottom of the six, because you were working on eight, nine, and one in the lineup. See how that plays out. One other note about Hawkins. Not only has Detroit been, been through this many, many times as a 42-year-old, this ball's in the air to... Right, easy play for cargo. Crowd got excited. And thank you very much because they uh, pulled the bun off, so no advancement. And Crawford remains at first with one out. Aoki coming up. Let's see what Walt does here. He's got Friedrich ready, and he's going to go to Friedrich here. Or maybe not. He may go Brooks Brown. Saw a right hand, not a left hand, so it will be. It will be Brown. So with one out in the sixth inning, Eddie Butler jogs off. Brown. He had the top of the order coming up for the Giants. Nori Aoki, Joe Panic, switch hitting Angel Pagan. You're saying, well, why didn't Walt bring in the lefty Friedrich? Certainly an option with the left handed bats. But Brooks Brown, in his uh, brief career in the big leagues, dating back to last year, a couple of months, and the work he's done this year, lefties have hit just 208 against him. Right, so you have that number. You maybe need some length out of him where you come in and get the last two outs of this inning and you. You send them back out there for the seventh. And then, then you keep your two left-handers still 
viable in the bullpen for the for the seventh or possibly the eighth inning. So those are the numbers you referenced, Drew. 190 against uh, righties, 208 against left-handers. So there's not not much difference. Crawford at first base with one out. And it's 0-2 on Aoki. You got to be aware. You always got to be aware of wherever you are defensively. The left side of the infield, right side of the infield. You see uh, Aoki shoot one down the left field line his <laughs> last time up. He's two for two in a walk. Tough guy to strike out. Tough guy to double up. Hitting from the left side and swinging and running and coming out of the box, step closer to the bag. Good block by Nick Hundley. One and two. Well, he didn't one, even try one. to catch that. He just blocked it and then went and picked it up. Another thought on, on Latroy Hawkins. When Latroy was re-signed with the Rockies, second tour of duty last year, he said publicly on a number of occasions at the time, he goes, I'm just in the closer's role. I'm keeping that mm -hmm. seat warm for Rex Brothers because Rex was coming off a great 2013. So it's not as if Latroy saying, well, hold right, on, I'm right. the closer here. I mean, he's a team guy, and he understands. That's not his ego. And the other thing about a bullpen is we talk about it. Yeah, on paper, it sounds good to have your sixth inning guy, and then I've got my seventh inning guy in the eighth, and this guy's just going to pitch against left-handers, and then I'll close. The problem you have with the bullpen and what makes it the, one of the most difficult things for a manager is there's usually every night there's a there's a pitcher that's down and not available to go out and pitch to them. And it's not made public, but they've worked for two or three days in a row or they've thrown enough warming up. Oh, man, go, go foul. foul. Nobody was going to have a play on that if it stayed fair. No, so, so a manager goes into a game, he's got his sheet in front of him looking at it and saying, Okay, I can use this guy, but I can't use him. Or if I use him, it's only for one batter. And so that's where managing the bullpen becomes tricky. And it becomes a day-to-day -day operation. Yeah, the bullpen is short in two areas today, to your point. Ottavino, you want to stay away from. And, and Bergman's no longer down there in that long-haul capacity because he's your starting pitcher. <laughs> Tomorrow, so it's a it's a more conventional mm -hmm. bullpen. Instead of eight, it's really down to six. Two and two on Aoki. Crawford at first. Brown's doing a good job keeping Crawford from thinking about running. Bruce Bochy tried to cross things up because he had Heston swing away. And not try to move well, Brandon Crawford with the leadoff walk. And this is where it's going to be on Troy to make the call. If he takes off, where's the pitch? Who's going to cover the bag at second? He takes off, and it's hit on the ground a second. That worked out for the Giants. Good. And now they're two outs. The tying run at second for Joe Panic. A good call. By Troy up the middle to say, well, if he takes off where the pitch is, I'll go ahead and cover. I'm not going to, not going to mix it up. Bruce Bochy, one of ten managers with three World Series championships as an MGR. All the others are in the Hall of Fame. Nine others in the Hall of Fame. HOFs. Panic has walked twice. Let's hope this trend continues because San Francisco 0 for 6 today with runners in scoring position. And again, they come into the ball game over their previous four, just 3 for 26. Nick Conley very quiet behind the plate. Sets up shop down in mm -hmm. the zone unless obviously they want to move the ball up. 
But he gets a good low target, really quiet hands, quiet body. 1-1. One, one. Change up in the dirt, 2-1. Reminds me of a guy, now he doesn't get quite as low as Benito Santiago, who caught here for the Giants. Remember how low he would get it, put one leg out, and he would, his glove, would, the bottom of his glove would be almost on the dirt. Yeah, he got really low. Plus, he could throw from that position <laughs> also. Not just throw, throw you out. Yeah. Three and one. Trip Gibson didn't buy in. Pagan on deck. Two outs at second base. Brandon Crawford. Here's the 3-1. Pulled toward Morneau. He gloves it in the air. Just in case, he'll run to the bag. Once again, the Rockies turn away the Giants with a runner in scoring position. Eddie Butler survives six walks. And the Rockies continue to lead 1-0 as we go to the seventh. Arenado. It's time now for the big hit presented by Mako. Turn the car you drive into the car you love. How about that bomb? Back at Coors Field a couple days ago for Nolan Arenado. Second home run on the season for Nolan. Trying to get something started here in the seventh inning. Chris Heston continuing on. Heston has allowed one run so far in 12 innings of work in 2015. Arenado a ground ball to third and with runners at first and third he hit a sharp ground ball to short but it was turned into an easy 6-4-3. And again he'll send it to shortstop and Crawford throws him out. Ground ball after ground ball this afternoon from Chris Heston. Corey Dickerson next, the day after every Rockies victory. Get 50% off your online order at Papa John's. The promo code ROCKSWIN at PapaJohns.com. <laughs> Doug just did a little research. Check this out. With Eddie Butler walking six hitters, it's only the seventh time in Rockies history a pitcher has gone five or more innings, walked six, and not allowed a run. The last to do it, and you'll remember this, my friend. Ubaldo Jimenez, oh, April yes. the 17th, 2010, almost five years to the date. No and hit. he didn't allow any hits that day. No hit the Atlanta Braves, but walked six. This is to panic. Oh, that's when in that game he went into the stretch. 
after because the, he was after the sixth inning. Yeah, right? because he was having trouble throwing strikes out of the windup. Well, for Heston, that makes 11 ground ball outs, three fly outs, five Ks. You know, he reminds me of right now a little different arm slot. When Brandon Webb was in his prime with Arizona before he got hurt, mm -hmm. I mean, you couldn't lift the ball against no. Brandon Webb. Well, for Heston, it's, it, it helps to have the the sweeping curveball, and and that's what Webb had usually. You hear this term in baseball, that's left out over the plate, and that's a fair ball for Nick Hundley. So Nick's going to have himself a two-out double. But you usually think sinker slider. Yes. Sinker slider. With Webb, it was sinker curveball. And with this young man, though he has a slider, it's more sinker curveball. Well, Nick gets the slider. And deposit us down the left field line. Easy double for Hunley. Are they going to put DJ on? Well, if they do, you know you're going to you're going to get a pinch hitter. You know he's already in the on deck circle. So as hot as DJ is, I'm sure the thought crossed Boach's mind, but he's going to pitch to him. DJ an infield hit his last time up. He's got a seven game hitting streak to begin the year. You got a pitch to handle yes, there. Yes, he did. Two lefties warming up for the Rockies, Christian Friedrich, and in the Giants bullpen, Jeremy Affel. Well, I feel like Noah has replaced the pitcher's spot. On deck circle. Toward the hole, and Crawford saves a run. Not a hit, but he saved a run. And the crowd very appreciative. Well, you have to have it in your mind as an infielder. What are you going to do if, if you not sure if you're going to have a play and a runner in second and two outs? You got to dive to keep it and keep this from going into the outfield. And that's what Brandon Crawford did. Because if this gets by as deep as... Aoki is playing in left field. There's no way they would have been able to throw out Hunley. So Brooks Brown again does his job. Two thirds of an inning, nothing across. And Raffaele Noah, who was so impressive late last year, impressive in spring training this year, will hopefully extend the Rockies' lead to a couple of runs. Uh, that's what Dave Rigetti's talking to the, the pitcher about Heston. It's all about scouting reports. Yeah, I well, assume, right? and for Anoa, last year he was 476 with runners in scoring position, 10 for 21. you're chatting about you put the ball in play and it doesn't matter whether he's hitting right-handed or left-handed one out this kicks away here comes Hundley and he is out at home plate he's caught him safe did he change it? You he know, just changed it. I think it. he's saying he couldn't block the plate. He had no place to go. He just changed it. And the Rockies get the run. It's two to nothing. Trip Gibson had indicated Four. out. He oh. was waiting to see if the baseball had gotten kicked loose. Or he's and then he changed the call. Or he could be saying that with the slide and then he reached in there later on with his foot the ball kicks away to the right of Posey gets it oh you know what 
his left hand reached the the plate. Now watch the slide. It comes up short, but then watch just eyeball his left hand. He sweeps, doesn't tag him. Oh, might have got him on the. Oh, he's sitting on the ball. That's no, he what doesn't happened. Have the, baseball. the baseball came out. Yeah, because he indicated out. I yes. mean, he indicated he was tagged out. And then he's like, hold on a second. There's the ball underneath. There, Trip Gibson sees it. Yes, and R- Rafi's pointing to the baseball. Now, why are they going to review this? Because the ball is never secured in the ha- in the glove. Because there's the out sign. Wait a second. He's safe because the ball's sitting underneath him. It's got to be secure. It has to be Tag, secure. The ball pops out. And they you can see the ball there's, coming out of the glove. You, The ball came out immediately. Yeah. The ball right came away. out immediately. There was the out call well, initially. Yeah. He called him out because he didn't see where the ball was. Time for a Subaru review. Whether you're on the road or at the game, everybody could use a second set of eyes. Crowd reacting because they've just seen it on the Jumbotron in center field. But I don't know why they're booing. I mean, the ball was out of his glove. It was snow cone at the end and then comes out. They're they're booing, (laughs) as you well know, because they have a significant bias being here in San Francisco. That, 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 That angle doesn't do it the same justice as the previous angle you know and Hunt, Nick's trying to make sure he doesn't knock over Heston here comes a call safe and that's so the, the right Rockies call. have a two nothing lead it's absolutely the right call he didn't secure the baseball they popped out immediately so Nick Hunley comes down the line on a wild pitch and scores and also, keep in mind, D.J. LeMay, who obviously mm-hmm. moved up. So if Enoa throws out a base hit, a chance to get another run. Watch here. He would have been out, but the ball came out immediately. When his spike hit Heston's mm-hmm. glove. And Heston will get an air for that, for dropping out of his glove. Two rows fouled off, two and one. Doesn't matter. It's another all-important run. See, I thought his hand snuck in there, but it was when he kicked the ball out of the glove of Heston. Well, it was a cre- you're right. It was a very creative slide. The only reason I, di- I knew that wasn't the call is even Gibson waited a while, but then he indicated uh-huh. out. So it wasn't that he said, no, the no. hand got in there. It wasn't until he saw the, the ball underneath Nick Hunley that he changed it. We didn't see that. We no. couldn't We couldn't see it from the our vantage point two two and this ball lifted to center field Pagan is there so the Rockies will get a second run Nick Hundley a two out double eventually coming around to score two nothing Colorado middle of seven stretch time in San Francisco
thing as we go to the bottom of the seventh. Who wants tacos? Fans follow at Root Sports underscore RM on Twitter to receive alerts for the Rockies taco special when the Rockies score seven or more runs. Drew Goodman, Jeff Houston, and Jenny Kavnar from AT&T Park. 328th consecutive sellout at AT&T Park. And the Rockies will now hand the baseball to Christian Friedrich in the seventh. Angel Pagano flip around to the right side. And Buster Posey and Brandon Belt. For Christian settling into the role as a full-time reliever this year. Last year, part-time starter, part-time reliever. Gives you that extra arm, left-handed arm in the bullpen to complement Boone Logan. Three on the left side against Pagan from the right side, and he promptly hits it to <laughs> Morneau. Thank you very much. Stayed down. and One pitch, one out. Got to like that. Buster Posey will be next. Brooks Brown with the two-third scoreless innings has now made 15 straight scoreless appearances dating back to last August 27th, covering 13 innings. Lodges five hits in that time. Eight punch-outs, one strikeout. Or see, eight punch-outs. <laughs> eight punch-outs, one walk. For Mr. Brown in the background. Nice find. Posey with a big swing, fouled off 0 and 1. New role, you heard Jenny talk about it for Latroy Hawkins. It will not be in the ninth inning. Today it will be Rafael Betancourt, probably going forward the rest of the week. And you would assume Adam Adovino will get that opportunity. Walt Weiss said you know, he's going to. He has a lot of candidates. He wouldn't commit to one. Today he did say Betancourt with the probability that Adovino's down. 0-2. Oh, and this is fouled off. Well, and for, for Adam, if he is down today, then he'd be available tomorrow and Wednesday with Thursday being an off day before he head over to L.A. up there one and two this is where that that run last half inning so big it to be up two to nothing with Buster Posey coming to the play Posey the MVP in 2012 yes, he, he went did. no question good pitch by Friedrich two outs great pitch also know what's great it's the rooftop it's a place to be during baseball season arrive early for pregame festivities and beer specials before first pitch the 303 Rockies are going online to rockies.com slash rooftop now the Rockies shift over to the right side with Brandon Belt at the plate hit by a pitch back in the first robbed of a hit by DJ LeMahieu and a fly ball to left field. Rockies over the weekend taking on the Cubs. You know who their dentist is, the team dentist for the Cubs, right? No, I know. Christian's dad. You really? look like you need some help with the uh, <laughs> incisor. <laughs> with the incisor. <laughs> Go see Doc Friedrich. I know his dad was in Colorado this weekend. Here's the 0 2. Two nothing Colorado, one two bottom of the seventh yeah. inning. See you later, Brandon Belt. Great inning for Christian Friedrich. One two three, couple of punch outs. So we move on to inning number eight. The Rockies ahead by a couple of runs.
Mark, thank you very much. Jeremy Affelt, the former Rockies on the mound, 2006-2007 with the Rockies. He's pitched in four World Series, the first being with Colorado in 07, and that pitch is fouled off by Charlie Blackman. Blackman, Cargo, Tulo. Here in the eighth inning, the Rockies leading two to nothing. Well, 35-year-old Jeremy Affelt ranks fourth among all active pitchers in games played. Of course, LaTroy Hawkins leads that list. Francisco Rodriguez, who the Rockies saw last week. Joe Nathan, and then 725 games for Jeremy Affel. It's a lot of ball games. The Royals, when they brought him up in 2002, wanted to make him a starter. 03 started 18 ball games. But this has been his role in the big leagues, and he's done it exceptionally well. Gets the ground ball to Joe Panic, one out. Hey, Cargo is 0 for 2 in a walk. Final line on Chris Heston, seven innings. He allows both runs, one of which was unearned because he had the ball kicked out of his glove. Seven hits, couple of walks, five strikeouts. Very impressive first look for the Rockies at Chris Heston. He Got a ton of ground balls. Cargo takes a strike, just two for 15 lifetime against Affel. Thirty-three postseason games for Affel. There's that curveball, and it's 0 and 2. His postseason ERA in those 32 mm -hmm. games, 086. Third all time, slightly ahead of Babe Ruth. Number one is Mariano Rivera. And Cargo loops one to left center field, breaks his bat, he'll take it. So Cargo with a base hit. With one out, it'll be Tulowitzki's turn. MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service is celebrating 13 years watch every out of market game live or on demand in true HD real time highlights live look ins and more blackouts and other restrictions do apply for this but you don't want to miss out visit MLB.com TV for details Tulo drove in the Rockies first run with a single to left and he takes strike one George Contost so many, you, you win a world Hopefully championship, and it's not a surprise. They didn't make many changes. Now, they lost Pablo Sandoval. That's well, a, a, bit, that, a, a big omission from this year's roster. Michael Morse, we mentioned earlier. But the bullpen, almost uh, identical to a year ago. Deep uh, center field, but out there to make the catch is Pagan. Two outs, and that'll bring up Moino. Well, they lost Pablo to more money in longer years. They didn't want to go that long. And Michael Morris left for Miami, but besides that, it's pretty much the same cast. Justin had a single back in the fourth inning, one for three. Was there anything as a base dealer that you could see with a left-handed pitcher that gave you an indication? That he was going to the plate. It's, it was an individual thing between. This is lot the shallow center. This could be tough. Crawford doesn't make the catch. And now Morneau with nobody smart. covered second will run in there. How Cargo smart. around third will hold in that spot. With the wind and where that ball was. And as deep as Pagan plays center. Particularly with a big bat like Morneau up there. That drops for a for a double. No other well, way to score it. And look how far the infielders had to go out and then nobody covering second base. This is either one, it has to be Brandon Belt who, who follows the, this play over or the pitcher has to get to second. But Justin realizing that there's nobody there, I'm going. Now a base hit scores two runs. And they're not going to they're not going to let uh, Arenado from the right side face Affelt with Dickerson on deck. So the load of 
up for Dickerson. Boy, how big would this be? The eighth inning, a ballpark where it's like pulling teeth trying to get runs. Throw out a base hit and go up by three or four here late. And Dickerson, you know, he's going to hang in. Corey, two for five so far this year, left on left. Well, and then if you're looking at it from an offensive standpoint, Stu Cole at third base, you look at the arms for the Giants, Ioki and left field, just average across the board. The only one that has the above average arm strength would be the center fielder, Angel Pagan, but he plays deep. He does charge it hard and get, gets rid of it. And then Blanco, average strength, but for a right fielder, probably below average. So even if it's a base hit, you have Justin, a little slower guy at second base, still try to score him and tack on more runs. Five for the Giants trying to get their tenth here and it's bounced to second. So Afel works out of it. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. The Rockies leading it two to nothing. Mobile. Well, the Rockies had a 1 0 lead. A wild pitch by Chris Heston. And Buster Posey goes to track it down. He throws to Heston. Nick Huntley coming down the line. And initially he's called out by Trip Gibson. Except the ball came out. And then uh, Bruce Bochy came out. It went to review in New York. And the replay officials in New York determined that the fielder being Haston failed to maintain possession of the ball throughout the tag thus the call was changed to safe Justin Maxwell takes strike one he's pinch hitting for Gregor Blanca so it'll be Maxwell Duffy Crawford against Boone Logan handling the eighth inning here Maxwell with the Royals uh, last year he came up with Washington was in Houston for a brief period of time. Well, with the Giants, big, big guy, 6'5, 225 yeah, pounds. Big, strong, athletic guy who's primarily been an extra outfielder in his career, one and two. Fourth round pick back in 05 of Washington.
Um, he was uh, he was really I should say was I assume he's still very bright. He got nothing but A's in high school. Decided to go to Maryland on a baseball scholarship, where he grew up, instead of going to Harvard, <laughs> which was a similar well, similar to you and I. I mean, we, <laughs> we you decided to go I to, to the yeah the Harvard of Wyoming. The Harvard University, of Laramie. Yeah. <laughs> University of Wyoming. This is a high fly ball to right field. Cargo puts his glove out. And <laughs> wow. he'll make the catch. Wow. You just never take anything for granted when the ball no. is in the air in San Francisco. Nope. Just everybody just keep tracking the baseball. Don't give up on it assuming somebody else is going to have it. I don't care which way that that wind barometer is blowing or how hard it is. You just have to take a look at the, the flags and know it's San Francisco. Matt Duffy, a single in the second. He walked in the third and struck out in the fifth. Eddie Butler's on the plus side, despite the fact that Eddie walked six batters in the game. He walked six. And allowed five hits. He made big pitches. He got out of bases loaded situations in the first two innings and then two on in the third inning. Eleven well, base runners left on by the Giants this afternoon. There's 18 men left on total between the two clubs. It's a good looking pitch from Logan. 0 oh 2. See a tighter rotation on the ball out of the hand of Boone Logan than we saw last year. His, his elbows feels better. He's getting the, the extension, finishing his pitches. And Sergio Contos, the former closer, Sergio Romo. Two and two. Throw two outs. Two outs, Brandon Crawford, who's 0 for 2 in a walk. Brandon grew up rooting for the Giants, Northern California kid. Went down south, played his college baseball for the Bruins, the University of California, Los Angeles. Top teams in the Pac-12 this year. Which is uh, always one of the top conferences in college baseball. Two outs, nobody on in the eighth. And Crawford swings and misses. Joaquin Arias on deck. at a slider. It's 0-2. Well, throw him a third slider. Let him wave at that one goodbye and let's go to the next inning. I like that plan. I think that's a wonderful mm -hmm. idea. Well, he just got a little piece on yeah. that slider. Still throw it again. So to peek in, see what yeah, that's a little veteran thing. I'm shake his head, but that's the sign you want. You won the slider. 
put the doubt in the hitter's mind. The mental game. Yes. Hitters are trying to think along with the pitchers, and the pitcher and catcher are trying to outthink the hitter. Off to the fastball in. Too far in. And Crawford will go to first. Well, the thought was I've, got, I've thrown him slider, slider away from him. Let me see if I can mix it up and come inside. He came in too far. Steve Foster is going to run out to the mouth to talk to Boone Logan. Joaquin Arias will be the pinch hitter. I'm just thinking ahead. If Logan can get Arias here to end the inning, you have Aoki who will lead off again, we're assuming would lead off the ninth inning. Betancourt is scheduled to close. We can give mm -hmm. Rafi a clean inning, and Rafi's handled a lot of ninth inning saves, as we all know. Or you could come out and say, boom, go get the lefty and then make the change. First things first, though, Arias at the plate. Strike one on a slider. But if you do that, you then are already saying, well, I, I wouldn't have him available for tomorrow. Yeah, and one, one thing, you know what? And I was speaking too quickly because Logan's due up third mm -hmm. in the ninth inning. Going two. Well, we've seen some really good sliders today at 80 miles an hour on this one on the forward strike zone from Boone Logan. Trying to put away Arias ahead 0-2. You have Boone's now more 91, 92, occasionally a click more than that. I mean, he was with the White Sox, mm. and it was mid-90s and above. No fun is what it was. <laughs> Hard-throwing guy that threw, hit the ball. On the left side, of it, real, a, a slinging type of arm action. There's the riding fastball to strike out Arias, and we'll go to the ninth inning. Good inning for Boone Logan. Rockies two and the Giants nothing. Colorado trying to spoil opening day in San Francisco for the defending world champs. Brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. And by Mike Shaw Subaru. Always our lowest price in sales and service guaranteed. First of 19 between the Rockies and Giants this year. And so far, so good. The Rockies up 2 to nothing in the top of the ninth inning. Let's go back to our Denver studios and Mark Stat. Mark.
plus ballpark factor also all of that on the Twitter post game show to follow Rafael Betancourt's warming up for the bottom of the ninth but first things first Nick Hundley to face George Contos who Justin Maxwell is now in right field I love that new defensive change graphic we have this year it highlights where they went it just shows where everybody is in case you'd forgotten little cutter over the outside corner for a strike Nick a double in the seventh inning with two outs and that is turning out to be a huge play in this game and that he eventually would score on that wild pitch well don't forget the base hit after that by DJ LeMahieu to, to advance him to third to and, have that and if not chance. for a great play by Crawford keeping mm -hmm. that uh, ball in the infield, it would have been an RBI hit for LeMahieu. One and two. Raphael. And, and the nice thing about a veteran bullpen is that Betancourt is not doing something that's unfamiliar. Right. To him. Been there before. He knows how to control the heartbeat. This is a flare to right. It's going to drop. Nick Hunley throws out another base hit. Nick was saying how much he enjoyed playing here before the game. Just that, that atmosphere. And he's had another strong ball game. Been on three times today for the Rockies. If Colorado can build another run. Willeen has come out in the on-deck circle to hit for Logan. DJ's at the plate. Javier Lopez, the left-hander in the bullpen, the last left-hander that the Giants have. Now see how Walt plays it. Does he lay down a bond or maybe hit and run? Knowing you have Willeen hitting next. They went hit and run earlier with this combination, and DJ got a slider that was two feet outside. He just couldn't reach it. He swung at it, and Posey threw out Nick Hunley. Two strikes. DJ will take a walk. He's upset with himself. Yes. He didn't get that bunt down. He had the barrel out, then a riding fastball back into him. Pulled the bat back. Didn't have it out in front of his eyes. Stu Cole walked down the line to make sure that Nick Hunley had a good view of what he was putting on or not putting on. Well, whether he was taking off the the bunt sign and going to just the swing away. Well, the pitcher, I'm sure they would have left the bunt on because he didn't want him to hit into a double play. But to trust DJ and his ability to handle the bat. DJ a seven game hitting streak to begin the season. Five of the seven games he's had multiple hit games. DJ back up the middle off of Contos, and DJ's going to have another hit. Boy, I'm surprised Crawford even I threw that too. baseball. That wasn't very wise. I, I was expecting the full arm fake and then try to get Hunley circling around second base. Three-hit ball game for LeMahieu. Three infield hits, if you will. Two on, nobody out for the Rockies in the ninth. So now do you bring a pitcher up to, to lay down a, a bunt? This goes off the leg of Contos. And then Brandon Crawford barehands it and throws it across. I'd bring Descalso. I'd bring yeah. Descalso because, again, a, a guy that is a position player but, but not now, familiar with doing it. Yeah, but then they go to, to Javier Lopez, the lefty, to, to, because you have Charlie Blackman on deck. Again, you anticipate. It's not as if moves are happening. And you're and you're going to be surprised by it. Tommy Reynolds, Walt Weiss are together. They can plainly see that Lopez is warming up and would assume that he's going to be in the ball game. If not now, he's certainly going to be in yes. there for the next two hitters, Blackman and Gonzalez. If I'm Daniel, I'm saying thank you for letting Kanto stay in the game, and I could try to bunt off him instead of Javier Lopez.
Bruce Bochy has his reasonings for Daniel. Just get it down the third base line. And if you bunt it too hard, bunt it hard at the third baseman, make him make the decision whether he wants to come in and field it. And the Rockies in the inning are 0 for 4 <laughs> trying to get a bunt down. DJ couldn't get the bunt down. He made amends by getting the uh, base hit. And now Descalso. Well, do you keep the bunt on here? Again, it's a position player. Ordinarily, you'd say no. This is the one that I might, might keep it on because yep. I don't want to risk. I, I'll take the something to have the one out but still have runners at first and second and instead of having a runner at third with two outs. Yep. Not on, and it is uh, popped up. Shallow left. And the catch is made by Aoki. One out. With Blackman coming up, you're going to see Bochi. He's going to go get one of the two dependable lefties he's had for years. Seems like Jeremy Affelt's already been used. Javi Lopez, the former Rocky, both lefties, former Rockies. And he'll come into the ball game. Rockies leading two. Out in the top of the ninth inning. It's time for our Century Link link to what's next. Here's the pitching matchup tomorrow. Christian Bergman will get the start for Colorado, a spot start. Jorge De La Rosa needs a little more time to build up some arm strength and get that groin right in Albuquerque. Tim Hudson, with 200 wins in his career, he will go for the Giants. That's tomorrow night. Drew Stubbs is going to pinch hit for Charlie Blackman. Blackman. Finishes the day two for four and has scored one of the Rockies' runs, but going against one of the premier left-handed specialists in the game. So Stubbs will pinch hit. Cargo on deck. Hunley at second. LeMayhew at first. And strike one on Drew. It'd be a great time for Drew to kind of mm -hmm. break out. He can't say he's in a slump during the regular season. <laughs> he's had only a few at bats, but. He struggled the latter part of March. But he ate up left-handed pitching last year. One and one. Well, somebody asked Walt today, how do you get Drew out of that slump that you were talking about? And he said, you just keep putting him out there. And then you wait for that just one hit. Maybe it's a blooper. Right? It's a broken bat. Get the player right in his mind. This ball pulled hard to short, bobbled for by Crawford, and he'll get just one. So it'll be first and third for Cargo with two outs. This 
Ball laid up, Brandon Crawford. This is one of the rare ones that you're going to get a double play mm -hmm. on Drew Stubbs if it's fielded cleanly He's because it was hit so hard. Two hopper, but is let the ball play him. Look you know, how deep his hands are, and, and they just tried to smother it. You get the lead runner. Cargo against Lopez. I'm sure somewhere in the mind of Javier Lopez, what Cargo did to him last year when he hit one about four miles. Ended in McCovey Cove. Two and out. So Hundley at third. Stubbs at first. Well, anticipate a ball down again if you're only at third. Scored once already in the game. A wild pitch. Cargo back up the middle, but Crawford's right there. So the Rockies threaten. They do not score. They're looking for three more outs. Old reliable Raphael Betancourt will take the baseball in the ninth. Two to nothing lead as announced today. Walt Weiss will mix and match for the ninth inning roll today, belonging to Betancourt, who likes the makeup of this Rockies bullpen. Yeah, the guys can do their job, and, and so far everyone is, you know, trying to do their their best. And, and it's a good group of guys there. And um, and like we always talk about, it, you we, we have to be ready and uh, for every game. And, and you speak other guys up. You know, when we when somebody can do the job. And that's what we've been doing so far. But this is a long season, you know. This, uh, when when you play 162 games, it's, it's hard, and you have to be prepared for that. Rafael Betancourt will turn 40 later this month. He is the oldest active player from Venezuela. This will be his first save opportunity situation of the 2015 season, and his first guys since 2013 when he had to have Tommy John surgery. Incredible comeback for him to be on the mound right now. Absolutely. Here we go, top of the order. Nori Aoki, crowd trying to come alive for the first time today. And True to form, Betancourt pours one over the outside corner at strike one. 74 career saves for Rafi. His last coming, as Jenny kind of alluded to, in August of 2013, August 20th, in Philadelphia. And that just missed. It's one and one. The only other change, Drew Stubbs, naturally for Charlie Blackman, when we pinch hit for Raphael has maintained the pinpoint accuracy that he has always had. Even coming back from the surgery. Still hit, hit the outside corner, spot it wherever he needs the pitch to be thrown. 
Well, think about the two guys that uh, have worked late in the games, try to save ball games. First, it was John Axford, Milwaukee, everything that he had to deal with during spring training, going back to Milwaukee where he had saved a number of games. His poor son in the hospital, and now Rafael Betancourt had a save opportunity. 1-2, the strikeout, and Hunley will go apply the tag. One out in the ninth inning. Three fastballs, and then he goes slider. <laughs> the throw off the hitting of the time, uh, the timing of the hitter. 84 sinking that away. Up. That may have been a changeup looking at that movement. What do you think, Huey? Yeah, because he turned it over. Pronated the wrist and got the movement to fade away from Aoki. I like Corey Sullivan's description on facing Betancourt. Corey on the postgame show the other day saying, you know, you'd look up on the board and you'd think it was 95, 96, <laughs> and it'd be, you know, 90, 91. Still, still get tardy swings. Joe Panic fouls that pitch off. Joe Panic. Strike two, one and two. Well, maybe he'll go back to this strikeout pitch that he had of Ioki. It will freeze it right as he gets ready to release it. It's a split finger. See the ball come out of the glove or out of the hand. Throw it like a fastball. Get the action of a changeup. Split change. Fastball away. Nick Conley. Sets up on the outside corner, 1-2, just off the plate. Let's see if he revisits the splitter. It's a pitch that Bruce Suter made probably as famous as anybody. That's what he asked for. Gone on deck. Obviously, you always want to do things in order in the ninth inning. But even more so, today you can avoid Buster Posey. Every manager coming into San Francisco tries to avoid. Two and two with one out. Wow. Come on, Trip. Who's that? He'll set up away. Keeps it in the body. Frames it, holds it, tries to stick it, all of that. Trip wasn't buying. He'll go out there again. Three and two on panic. Got him. Two outs. And that was the fastball that appears to be harder than what it is because of this tardy swing from Joe Panic. Let me just say that one was 88 miles an hour. Two seam fastball. But he keeps it down. I and mean, that's at the knees. Three on the right side for Pagan. Two outs, nobody on. Rocky's up 2 nothing, And Pagan swings and misses. Got a little piece of it. 0-1.
Rockies with 11 hits today and kept that streak intact. Double digit hits in all seven ball games. Outside. And you don't often see teams throw out 10 plus <laughs> hits at AT&T. No. Not against this staff in this yard. Well, and, and against a pitcher that you've never seen before. Who was really good. Mm -hmm. well, Chris Heston, seven innings, seven hits. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Two and one on Pagan. Angel today had a base hit up the middle in the first. Nothing since then. One for four. Mr. Bergman staying warm, getting ready for tomorrow. The 2-1. In the air to left field, playable for Corey Dickerson. He's got it, and the Rockies have knocked off the Giants in their home opener, two to nothing. The Giants, who dominated home and have been outstanding in home openers at AT and T, twelve and three coming into today, and the Rockies beat them two to nothing. They made all the big pitches with traffic, and there was plenty of traffic early in the game. Twelve left on for the Giants, but the Rockies prevail. They improved to 4-0 on the road in 2015. Our Jimmy John's delivery of the game, the work of the bullpen. Outstanding once again. Three and two-thirds, not only no runs, no walks, no hits. The only base runner was when Crawford.